Hello, Aku here again. Welcome to episode 11 of my Feed the Beast Ultimate, or oh, Feed the Beast um, Beginner's Guide. Now, I'm in the hollow hill. It's definitely a medium hollow hill. It's not a large one. I've had a good um, look around. I've, I don't normally do this, but I built a little house in here. Uh, I can take this glass view back because, as I mentioned before, it doesn't smash. So when I've finished in here, when I've cleared this place out to a good level, I'll uh, just take them back with me. I've made a little house here. I've kind of lit this up more than I usually would just because I wanted to show you guys how safe you can make these places. These places are very unsafe if you don't clear them out. But especially now we've got this thing on the F7. Press F7 there. Um, you'll see that pretty much everywhere in this place, at least at the ground level, is free from spawn. Now there's some stuff there, so I'm gonna have to fight the odd mob. But I've been right round, I've used like nearly two stacks of torches. Which sounds like a lot, but if you think about that, it's only like thirty two coal. And uh we're gonna get thirty two coal back from in here. And I can always get to take some torches back at the end. But um I've really basically run around with F seven on and thanks I love them. And just chucked down torches wherever there was a uh, these red squares. There's still going to be some mobs spawning because, as I said before, hello spider. As I said before, there's um, there's dark places up there that things are going to spawn on, like there, for example. Things are going to spawn on there, and then they'll drop down and come try and get me. But we're pretty safe to get a good amount of resources. So look at that. If I take rid of that light, you see, you can, you can see really nice where you where your um. What do you call it, sir? Your, your safe zones. So now we're in here, I'm going to spend a good 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes, manually mining some stuff out of here. Because when you get your first quarry, or if you use turtles, um, I'm not really good with turtles, so I'm not going to be taking you that. You have to, uh, sorry, I have to go somewhere else for that. I don't really touch anything that involves Louis, even though I know you can just pay spin stuff. Um, this the thing called pay spin that store, it's like a code repository you can just. You can get program pre-written programs for the in-game titles if that's your kind of thing. Um, have a look on the, I think, Computer Craft forum or wiki, and that'll tell you all about that stuff. Pretty, pretty good stuff. Titles are quite cheap to make, and um, they've got some very good, some very good programs available out there. Or oh, if you're any good at writing code in lower, that you can make um, some really extravagant stuff yourself. But I'm not going to do any of that. When you get your first quarry or other mining device finding one of these big hollow hills this is a medium as i've said finding one of the big versions of these now the, the big version makes this look pretty small the big versions are actually huge um finding a large one of these would net you a hell of a lot of resources by putting a quarry on it or setting some tails up to go and rampage through it so at the minute i'm just getting getting iron and uh redstone at the minute and coal but i'm gonna go around here like i say i'm gonna probably spend the next hour or so not clearing this out fully, but getting a good amount of resources out of here. Especially all the stuff that's low down. I'll start Ned pillaring up to get stuff like that. So, I um, actually should have brought some of that cobble with me that I just dumped in that chest back there. But use a bit of this gravel. It's quite, pretty easy to pick up gravel. And then um, what we can do is oops, grab that gravel. So we well, want to be bought here. This is called Ned Pillaring, if you're not aware of it. Well, it's called a few things, but one of the slang names for it is Ned Pillaring. Jump up like so, jump back down, you'll take a little bit of damage, but if you keep your health full, you're alright. And then just, oops, don't click that button. And just dig that out with a torch, put a torch down, and it'll pop all the gravel back into your inventory. Pretty useful. Um, that's how I do it anyway. Yeah, I'm going to get this glowstone, lapis, there will be some diamonds in here, I'm not sure what that is. Again, texture pack issues mean I'm not sure what some of the stuff is I'm looking at. But there's definitely some diamonds in here, that's, that's diamonds up there, look. So, yeah, I'm going to clear on the outsides and then I'll be back when I've spent a good, probably half an hour, going through this place, getting loads of goodies, and then uh, I'll show you what's in the chest. So, back in a bit. Okay, I'm back for a little bit just because I'm just at level 30 because all this, a lot of this stuff that you man, redstone, coal, uh, lapis, 
the red power gems or rubies, sapphires, they'll give you XP. So I've actually, I'm up to level 30. So because I've got a nice amount of diamonds, I'm going to go and make a diamond pickaxe and enchant it. Because why not? I might get a really nice pickaxe that lasts me for ages. I'd like to, think, I'd rather make a Thaumian pickaxe and uh, enchant that, but we can't do that yet. So I'm going to use, I'm going to get plenty of, get, get plenty of diamonds from in here. So I'm going to use three of them. But this stuff will give me XP. As you can see. Um, and just from where I remember, I just manned some V shards there and I didn't have no inventory for them. So yeah, I'm just going to go and make myself a nice diamond pickaxe. So hopefully if we get unbreaking on it, it'll last us a good while. Possibly efficiency. So uh, I put all that in there, but actually that's a waste of time. I might as well take it with me as I'm going back to the overworld. We've got full inventory, that'll do. So as you can see, you get plenty of resources from these. It's night time here, so I'm just going to sleep. Just so nothing comes and gets me while I'm stood looking in a chest. There's nothing worse than having your chest blown up while you're stood looking in them. Um, so I've got plenty of redstone again, which is what we were short of yesterday. That's good. Six diamonds there. That's also good. And all kind of stuff. Uranium. And where do this one go? I'm gonna try and I try and keep my thing. I try and keep on top of my sorting of manual sorting of things when I start, so I don't get shit everywhere. Basically, uh, what's been there? Ingot. What's been there? Organic stuff. The class gun powder is organic because it drops off mobs, but even though that's not really doesn't really make sense, but you know. And cobble and yeah, lead off and go straight in there. This has been feeding the stuff into the induction smelter, but obviously the induction smelter is not doing anything with it yet. We'll be getting onto that for the next episode, possibly this episode, but probably the next episode we'll be getting on to starting to expand our production system. This guy's merely working away, still not really startling. I think a steam boiler is going to be one of the first things we need to get on with. Just while we're back here. Oh, look at that. It's cheeky, isn't it? Just while we're back here, um, let's have a look how much wood we've got. Just, just out of interest. We have got 4,268 logs, 2,000 saplings, and 200 apples. So that guy's working away nicely. You should be full of, he is full of charcoal, even though you can't see that end slot. And that's full of charcoal. So that's, that little self-contained system will just run forever. You never have to touch it again. Brilliant. Uh, our bees are working away. Our crops are looking good, even though, I'm surprised they haven't grown. It's been a while. Anyway, we don't need to touch any of that just for now. So let's, let's make this pick and see what enchants we get. See if we get lucky. As I said, I'd rather make a Thaumian one. I've only got one Thaumian ingot. I could go look for some more dungeons. Oh, I'll start doing some Thaumcraft. Um, mm, should I do some Thaumcraft? Screw it. I'm going to go off ca off tangent again. Look at that. See how well I organise these things. We need three books. Oops. Don't need to throw them on the... F oh, where the hell have they gone? One, two, three. Go in there, will you? Um, six bits of wood. This is your first look at a bit of Thaumcraft. First thing you need is a bookcase. Mm. You can place it anywhere because it's not going to last very long. Next thing you need is one gold nugget, which we have there. One stick, which we have in our bag. And one V-shard. Any V-shard will do. Um, I'll use F since I've got Mm, I'll use fire since we've got most of them. Normally have more air than fire. And then, Wand of the Apprentice. That's our first Thaumcraft Wand. And then, my wand needs to charge up. You see I ain't got enough charge. You see there's a little bar going up above my food bar. 25, is that enough? Mm. Yep. 25 gets us our Thaumonomicron, which is your magic book for all things... I'm crafty. Also, I need to make a research table. Shows you how to make all that stuff. Here. You actually don't learn how to make the farm number You actually, it's one of them things that you have to actually look for on the internet if you don't know. There's nothing that suggests you should use your wand on a 
bookshelf, as far as I know. So but once you've done that, you've got the family number card. Everything else you need to know is in here. So, um, thankful we need an arcade and work table. That's just a table, hit with a wand. Shows you how to make the tables. Two tables and one of these scrabbing tools. Makes you a research table, which shows there. Need to make one of them. And then we can start researching stuff. One of the first things I want to research is that thing, which is thaumium, which will let me make some thaumium tools and thaumium armor, but we don't need that because we've got our awesome armor. So uh, actually, should I do that now? Right, I'm going to cut camera and just get all that set up and ready because thaumcraft research is pretty boring. There's quite a lot of YouTubers who cover it. Uh, I'll talk through how I've done it once I've done it, but I'll get it all set up off camera because it's, yeah, it's a bit boring. Back in a sec. Okay, I'm back. I've got a few things prepped. Now, I made three of them tables. I showed you what they were in the Thalmanoma Crunt. I think I'll show you again really quickly. Yeah, the tables are just slabs and wood. Slabs is just three bits of wood in a row. So I made three of them. We need three. The first one, I'm just going to, that one over there, I'm just going to hit with a wand. Let's put the wand into it now, so be careful. It takes your wand away, but you can get your wand back. Uh, we're going to need that out for now. So that's your basic crafting table for Thalmcraft. And then, this is going to be our basic, well not our basic, this is going to be our research table, that does all our research. We need an ink sack, feather, and a glass bottle. The glass bottle is just three bits of glass, so let's go with that next. One, two, three, it's just some glass bottles. Now we want a feather, and there's a feather, and an ink valve, which we should have a couple of. Quite a few of, that's nice. That makes us some scrubbing tools. And I believe we just hit these on there. There we go. Now we've got a research table. Excellent. Next thing we need for that is paper. Have we got any paper? 34 paper. Brilliant. 34 paper. That goes in that slot there. And then does this K3 or Thore? I always use Thore. K3 doesn't seem to do a lot of difference apart from K3 is meant to. You don't lose items so much, but you still lose items and you don't need as much research. So I just, I just go Thore all the time. You very rarely see me put that to K3. So this is what we do, this is all research stuff. Basically if I started putting things in there, that's what the metallum aspect. If I click that research, we'll start researching something that has metallum in it. Or as long as you've got something available. A lot of the research is gated by completing other types of research first. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure that you're researching the stuff you can research. And you can see what you can and can't do by looking at your book there. So you see, all this uh, blanked out stuff, I don't believe we can do yet. I believe you have to. Uh, is that not how it works anymore? I, I'm not sure if I can actually search this without doing this first. I'm going to try and go straight for that in a minute. Now, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can randomly throw things into your research table, which is exciting the first time you do it, but I've done this like four or five times now, and it gets pretty boring after a bit. The other thing you can do is you can use a couple of the Feed the Beast forums or websites. There's a really good thing on the wiki, the FTB wiki, wiki.com. Um, we search by aspect, that lists all the things that go into a particular piece of research. For, for example, I've got a good idea, but I could check that the thaumium research I'm looking at is going to have metallum, which is that aspect. It's going to have magic, which is the pep, purple one on the end there. Precantatia, it's called and possibly exchange which uh, permits here show which you can get from eggs i guess i guess i'm going to check that before i do it though the only other thing you need we don't need straight away but we're, i've made one anyway is a vanilla cauldron which is just seven iron in a u shape and this is going to need heat sauce so what we're going to do there is i'm going to put a bit of nether rack down there now to get nether rack obviously you want to make a and uh, a nether portal. Now I got this nether portal free so I never actually showed it. But so what you'd have to do normally, if you don't have a bug that gives you a, a nether portal for some unknown reason, is you create the shape using obsidian. It doesn't need the corner blocks, you can miss them out. So you need two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a minimum of 10 obsidian, which you can make with your minium stone, or you can dig up using the block breaker, that's your technique if you don't use EE3. I know some people disable it. And then what you need to do is you get a flint and steel, you just need to set fire 
what flint and steel does is it's it's a fire starter. Um, you just need to set fire to anywhere inside this square, and it'll tip. It'll become a nether pole. I'm just going to uh, give that a little clip. Just put that fire out. So then you'll be able to go in there, get a bit of nether rack. And what you can do with nether rack is, if you set fire to a bit of nether rack, that'll stay burning forever. That there, that will eventually have gone out after 30 seconds or so. This nether rack will keep burning forever. Well, all we need to do now is we put our cauldron above that, like so, and then give that a click with a wand, and that's now a Thorncraft Crucible, which we need to fill up with water, and eventually we'll get Alembics, and we'll change that around a bit eventually. This is just a temporary setup, like of everything else. I've just shoved things into this really cramped room that's got everything in here at the minute. It's uh, quite a bad way of doing things. At some point, I'll probably just build a factory somewhere and we'll start going properly now so that's all your basics you've got your arcane table your arcane workbench i mean with, with your wand on it you've got your research table with a bit of paper some paper in there and you've got your crucible that you are going to need water for when we start making things in that but the first things we're going to make will be in um we've got a water source over there if you remember the first things we're going to make uh Probably going to be in the arcane work table, although the thaumium you do need the crucible for. So if you put some water in there, see after a few seconds that'll start bubbling because um, Azanor's pretty cool with his textures and animated stuff. And look at that. So whenever it's bubbling, you can throw things in there and you can get stuff out. But you can only get stuff out that you've researched. So I am going to quickly just tab out and check the research for thaumium. I'm pretty sure, yep, yeah, I was right, it's metallum, so see, I kind of knew it, but I just wanted to check. So I know I'm throwing the right things in there, because I don't want to be wasting stuff. A couple of little techniques. We're going to need... We're going to need... Um, the magic symbol. One that I call Precantatio. Um, well, we don't need that flint and steel very much at all, so I'm going to put that on the tool right there, out of the way with them two things. Um, now, Precantatio, you can use magic stuff like, if you look at these V shards, they've all got it. It's a purple like wand looking thing. Um, some other stuff maybe got it. Don't know. What's that bad? Not gold. Bad metallum. Um, one thing you can do is sand just as solemn, which is the earth one, a standard. If you make sand into sandstone, you get rock and and earth, uh, saxon and solemn I believe. So let's just make um, seven of them at the minute. Now if you put that in there in a the square again you get smooth sandstone and that is Keras, the gold symbol. So you don't normally have to use gold for that, well you don't normally have to use gold but early game gold's a use of that. So but you don't want to be wasting your gold. See look gold's got that on there. It's called Keras or Karas. And that's it. It's valuable. It's a valuable aspect. So making making smooth sandstone gives us some of that carous aspect. Putting three in a row is sandstone slabs. So if we get six of them, and then if you put them two on top of each other, you get stuff called chisel sandstone. And that has got the magic one on it. So there you see we've got three of the magic symbol there. It's not very much, but it's only sand. And sand's pretty cheap. That brings me on to another thing. We need to start making automated sand production pretty soon. So should I go off on a tangent again? Uh, see, this is the thing. You try to make one thing, you end up making 84 other things. Um, I am I am going to go on to another little quick tangent. I'm going to make a quick machine here. It's, it takes some of that stuff, so I'll leave that in there. It's called an Igneous Extruder. Ignis Extruder, there it is. Um, it takes a machine frame, but it takes a pneumatic servo, some tin, some glass, and a piston. Um, down to one bit of glass, I need to cook a bit of this sand, so it's a good job I didn't use it all. Uh, let's, let's, let's get rid of it all. Mm, let's not save a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, 12 will do. Um, right, so this servo thing, it takes a couple of iron, a redstone and a bit of glass. We need some glass for that as well. Let's just move them out of my inventory at the minute. Let's put that copper into there. We've got a good amount of copper. It's quite nice. We've got another 64 pulverized to use there. 
when and of course we've got some stuff in the cave still that I've not brought back in the hollow hill so these will be in that pattern do they no press x to turn oh, x didn't turn them around at all that was me being a fool I should have pressed c there to turn them around <coughs> I press c no you're not working for me c x worked but c done bizarre okay so it's not that way I've done it that way three times now, it's not working. So it must be that way. There we go. Pneumatic servo. So that's similar to the redstone conductance coil and stuff we've used previously, but uh, stuff that uses liquid generally uses a pneumatic servo. I'm not sure, did the liquid transposer use that? Uh, liquid transposer. No, that uses a reception coil. Okay. The pneumatic server is using some stuff. Let's have a look what it goes into. Click on that, mm. press U. But it's the Ignis Extruder, the Aqueous Accumulator, which is pretty good. It gets mm. you a um, constant water source. Pretty cool. We're making one of them pretty soon as well. Um, they're very similar recipes. I should probably make them both right now. And Tesseracts, yeah, of course. The Tesseracts use the pneumatic servers as well. So that's all same four things. So yeah, actually I'm gonna make I'm gonna make both of these. Let's get a bit more of this stuff. Crazy tangent, started off the episode planning to mine a hollow hill. Bounced onto Thoundcraft and now bounced off Thoundcraft just to get some stuff that's gonna help the Thoundcraft. So it's kinda related. Two of them, two of them, two of them. So I'm making stuff you've seen before, so I'm not going for the explanation too much of what I'm doing but this is the machine frames that we need for in the middle there so that gets us let see what works now see what works when they're all in okay got two machine frames excellent uh, we need four bits of glass you bugger we've got three bits left uh, they can go in there that can go in there of course we can use a minium stone I'm sure to turn something in the sand but I don't want to rely on the minium stone too much so I'm not going to force everything to use a minium stone we need a piston so let's make that piston you'll find that at some point all of a sudden you just remember what pistons are to make because you make that bloody many of them that's uh, gravel I need cobblestone I need three bits of wood get you a piston we'll sling that in there and um, we've seen tin, so we need four bits of tin for these two machines. One, two, three, four. So there's our Ignis extruder. And then. Oh, what's the other one? Aqu Aqueous. What are we missing for that? Bucket. No, we've got a bucket. Tin, yeah. Oh, one bit of glass, of course. Yeah. Missing one bit of glass. So we've got Ignis extruder and an aqueous accumulator. Very good. Very good. And right. Ignis extruder. Really nice bit of kit. What it does is we have the output to the side there. Which is going to put stuff into our it's going to put stuff into our pulverizer for us. Let me know. I'm just going to turn the output of the pulverizer off. Let's say I'll turn you off. There it, that's not off. There it is. Turn that off. What you need to do with this thing is you need to put water in one side and lava in the other. So let's do the easy bit. Let's get the water in there. Now I think all you've got to do is click on the front of it and that's put that in there. Look in there now it's got a bucket in. It'll fit four buckets of each in. Let's go get a bit of lava. Now we had a lava source didn't we? Well we're here we might as well fill up all these buckets. And uh Put some in that magnetic engine. Well, rear might as well, eh? So I'm gonna put one in here for now. So as I said, just click on the front of it. Let's put it in there. And what that's doing now is, look in there. That is creating cobblestone for free. It's a cobblestone generator, and it's not using any of the lava or the water because you can make one of these in the well. If you put lava there, water there, this was cobble. This was cobblestone. No, this was cobblestone in the middle. If you cut that out, 
then the lava and the water touch each other and create another cobblestone. So cobble, cobble generator is a natural. It's, it's a natural quirk of Minecraft that you can create cobble that way. That's what this does. Also in this, though, you can create smooth stone and you can create obsidian. Smooth stone takes two milli buckets of this lava each time it uses it. So if we want to create smooth stone, it stops when it goes below one bucket's worth. So I'd have to put a second bucket in there. So let's do that. And now we've got two buckets worth in there. And if you see if I switch it to smooth stone, it's going to get stuck because that's got nowhere to go. And now it's going to start making smooth stone instead. And it uses a full bucket of water and it's used two milli buckets of that there. So, you see, if we wanted to make smooth stone, we'd actually have to have this aqueous accumulator feeding water to that, which is, well, we've got an aqueous accumulator. So that can go under there. What we need for an aqueous accumulator is it needs a water source either side of it. So if we put a water source in that block, and if we put a water source in that block, get our aqueous accumulator, put that in the centre block there, in between them two water sources, What's going to happen now is that's going to fill up with water. There it goes. So that's going to fill up with water nice and quick because it's got a water source on two sides of it. More than two sides, I don't think makes a difference, but as long as you've got a water source on two sides, then you've got a constant water supply getting pumped into whatever that's touching. So for now, we can have that as an input, and that'll keep this side full of water all the time. So now we've got enough lava in there to make quite a lot of smooth stone. So that's the way you can get smooth stone. This isn't taking any power, by the way. This is. This doesn't take power, it doesn't have to be connected, look, it's not connected there. So you've got a source of cobble or smooth stone if you lose a bit of lava. Very nice, very nice. We don't actually want cobble at the minute, uh, smooth stone at the minute though. We, we will be making a lot of smooth stone with that thing. At some point we'll be making a hell of a lot. Probably make um, a real lot, make it into, into stone bricks and use that to build some kind of factory. Now I'm going to keep my eye on the time of day make sure I keep sleeping and boo, 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 what was it so right so we need to feed this now this cobble into this pulverizer so we want an input from the side there turn that top input off that's where our power's coming from so this is now accepting cobble free cobble from this this of course is using energy what this is doing is turning the cobble into sand so now we've got a sand generator so we've got Cobble generator, smooth stone generator, obsidian generator that uses a full bucket of each. So that's quite expensive on lava. So I'd, I'd use a medium stone before using that. Um, but we've got that capability. It's also a sand generator, and as a byproduct of that, there's a 10% chance of getting gravel. So it's also a gravel generator. So this little setup here uses, it, it creates quite a lot of stuff. It's really nice. Another good thing about having a sand generator is. And that's the reason why the induction smelter is here. If you have sand in an induction smelter, you can put your ores straight into there. Let's quickly jump back into our twilight forest. Think, get a bit of ore over here. There we go. I can all do. In fact, let's take all this. Why not? Why not? Now, instead of putting things into there to get pulverized and then into there to get smelted, as long as we've got a sand supply, we'll, uh, we'll just use this silver for now. I don't want to use too much power just yet. Let's, as long as we've got a sand supply, it takes a bit of sand and it makes one ore into two ingots. So you're cutting out, you're cutting out a step pretty much by giving this sand. So we're not pulverizing it into two and then making it into ingots, we're actually making it directly into two ingots. There's also a chance of getting stuff called sl uh, rich slag. I'm doing this with certain metals. I believe gold is one that can give you rich slag. If you use rich slag in the place of the sand, you can get three ingots. So this is a way of gaining some rich slag to get your bonus ingot. I generally use it on either gold or copper, because they're the ones that you tend to be lowest of. So let that work away. And there, uh, we want that to input that way. So that's going to be putting sand into there now. So we've got a sand source. But of course, we also want sand for. Our magic research, what's the whole point of this was for? So that's, that's that tangent finished. There we go, we've got a bit of rich slag. So now, just to, uh, just to keep showing you all the goodies, let's stop that. That'll build up some sand in there for us. We... Full. Get off. Um, let's put you in there out of the way. And let's keep on top of stuff. 
What's been there? Uh, Zycraft stuff. What's been there? Ingots in there. Different type of silver ingot. Don't, because this this gives a different type of ingot than the that does. So that's something else you need to be aware of. Got a four this rich slag, and I meant to grab that before it used up all the gold. Now if we get a bit of do a bit of just one single bit of copper. Uh, iron, I mean. That's going to use one rich slag, one iron ore, and it's going to give us three iron ingots and a normal slag. Normal slag you can just make rock wool with. Don't have to worry about that for now. But that's that's how you get your extra ingots using thermal expansion stuff. So we can just pour this in there for now. Nice amount of gold. Nice amount of iron. What we're interested in at the minute is sand. And just while I'm here, let's get rid of that lava. Into that, get a bit more power generated. I think next episode is going to have to be a steam boiler. Because this is going to go down pretty quick. Making all this sand. Oh, 32, that'll do us. Let's make as many of these as we can. Uh, chiseled, sand, sandstone. Not as many as I'd like, but a bit more chiselled there. Okay, I'm going to need some iron. Unfortunately, magic uses quite a lot of iron, which is quite expensive early on. But put a bit of iron in there. And in fact, let's see if we can start with the chiselled sandstone. If we can get something with magic straight away, that might be thaumium. So there we go. It's got magic in it. This whatever we're making here. It's unknown. I clicked that three times, it's used a bit of the chisel sandstone. And it's narrowed down. So the solemn was in there, the Saxon was in there. It's definitely not a Saxon. If we click clicking this, it's definitely a solemn arbor. They're still there but they're blanked out, so they're not in this recipe, so that's what that's saying. This is all gibberish. This will become apparent in a bit. Keep going until we get that's a full. That's hundred percent now. It's got a little line around it. It's telling us what it is. We're making enchanted fabric, which is not really useful at the minute. That's still uh, blanked out. So enchanted fabric, I believe, needs wool, um, which we don't have a lot of. I think it can use string. Yeah, it can. We've got quite a bit of string. Let's use a bit of that. Look at this panis symbol. There you go. Enchanted fabric has panis. Makes sense. Most of this stuff does make sense. So you, magic fabric, it's got fabric in it, it's got magic in it, and it's got uh, create work constructs. For that we need some wood, which as you know we've got an absolute ton of wood, so this is essentially free. Um, what am I doing? What the hell am I doing? Make that into planks. What I'm going to do for work is make... 16 crafting tables because they've got that work there. See it? Fabrico, the little anvil symbol. So it's a bit of hit and miss. We was actually going for a different pattern. We was going for the thaumium, but what we got was enchanted fabric. Now that's completed, you'll see at some point that became text. Uh, I think it's when maybe it's maybe 60% done. Created a simple but strong fabric from wool and spider silk. You're sure you can infuse it with magic somehow. It kind of gives you clues what goes into there. So, wool or string. It seems to put magic in there. And I don't see crafting component. Maybe is the is the um, clue for putting the workbenches in there. Now we've got this scroll. What we do is put it in our bar. You can read that same bit of text. If you right-click it, we've now researched that. You're looking at that one on cron. It's researched. That's pretty cool. So I think I don't think that was a little before. So we should be able to do the thaumium that I really want. Let's try that again. We've got magic again, but we've run out of that stuff. So let's quickly make some of this. I'm going to, have to check how long the episode is because it's probably going long already. Uh, Twelve of them. Some more of that chiseled sandstone. That, what does that get me? Does that get me some more of that as well? Does. So I've got nine chisel sandstone there, so a bit more magic. You got when you're doing this late game, you can use anything really. But once you do it, when you're doing it early, oh, so now I'm making robes that I don't really want. So I'm kind of going on a tangent, but I'm gonna cut the camera. I'm gonna 
do all the research I need to do to get the thalmium ingots. I'm going to check along the videos as well because I might have gone too long already. So, check, back in a bit. Okay, I'm back. I've been having a bit of fun. I started doing that research on the Thaumaturgy's rub. I was in here doing, had some string in there, and I saw a creeper there. Blew some shit up. Oh, son of a bitch. Made sure I couldn't see any more. Came back, put the stuff back together. Doing it again. Because a creeper there. Oh, you bastard. Blew up again. Blew some more. I've, I've, had, I've had to rebuild some of these uh, bookcases. It blew the nether portal out. And then a third one came after the fair one. I thought, screw you. I've, so I've rebuilt this... Uh, wet bench and this research table twice. I think it knocked some of the stuff into there, so I've lost there. Uh, I need to put some more water in there again. In the end, I thought, screw it, and I built a wall. So now I've got a wall and a door to keep our assholes out. Ah, the bastards. This time we'll tell these robes that we're making. The third aspect, so I did the Precantatio and the Panas. I it was cloth, so I pretty much knew that. Finishing them two, I've revealed the third one, which is Tutaman, which is defense. You need to put armor in for that. And that's the reason why I saved these things. These are iron boots that I looted off some of them little pixie men, um, them little dwarf mana things in that hollow hill. This is my old armor that's nearly dead. Any armor that's nearly dead, you want to save it because that's, look at that, it's got Nan Tutaman on it. That's going to really help. Well, it might have really helped as it was. Didn't help that much. Once you've got a good supply of, there we go, so we've finished that one. Once you've got a good supply of leather, you can use leather for that, but I ain't got a good supply of leather. My cows also escaped, had to portal gun them back in there. Um, have I got any leather? May have a tiny bit, no I am. Okay, uh, leather's got two of them on, so once you've got a good leather supply, then that's good for that. But until you've got a good leather supply, you kind of struggle a bit. I'm going to use some of this iron up, try and get the theory we're after. Basic transmutation, okay, this needs... This needs Keras and I'm gonna have to check what the third one is. I think it's Keras and eggs. The one that's on eggs. Um, sandstone got no, it's that one in it. That I need smooth sandstone. That's got yeah. So let's get that on there. And yeah, eggs. Pemetier shot. So unfortunately, my chickens vanished. Let's get some more eggs. Uh, more chickens, but before they vanished, I managed to get some eggs. And eggs have this permutation on it, so the little two green arrows. Seeds also have that. Once you've got a lot of seeds, you can use seeds for that. But eggs are a pretty useful source of that. That gets us the basic transmutation. Now that might have been actually needed to get us on the path for the um, thalmium. I'm going to try. It Precantation now. Let's give us another one. Thamium, excellent. So that works. So if I remember right, that's also these two. So we're after them two aspects. So we can put them both in together, hopefully. Well, the egg one's done already. And there we go. Thamium, that's exactly what I wanted. So it hasn't taken long. Got a little bit of research. Even if you don't like Thaumcraft, there's certain things that are really worth having. One of the things that's really worth having is you've got to kind of do all these bits to get that basic thumbcraft thing there. That, that kind of blocks everything below it. But these five wands are really worth having and the weapons that come off them. It, when you do a wand, there's also each wand is a weapon that goes with it. There's a fire wand, lightning wand, the wand of exchange, um, the wand of excavation. And they've all got a weapon that goes with them, a weapon or a tool, so a shovel a hoe, a sword, a pick, and a um, wood axe. The wood axe extra stream is really good. So if you don't like Thaumcraft, I suggest going at least to there and get them. So you see how you do a bit of that. So now we need to make a little bit of this. So if you look in here again, you can see that we need to make this in a crucible. It needs eight metallum and four precantatio, pair one. We only need two at the minute so we can make an axe. Pickaxe. Remember that was what was, we've got one in there from a looted chest. So we need. Can I make this into? Um, I can. So let's even that out. Make this into chiselled. So that's good. It's one, two, three, four. And was it eight that we needed? What's that? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna need eight of that. 
Where's my inventory gone? There it is. So there's eight of that. We also need to fill up our crucible with water again. Like so. Let's get that in there first so that's boiling up. And we're going to need one metal. So. What, eight metallum is one metal. Eight for Cantatio is eight of this chiseled sandstone. Uh, that's a, was, that, was I right there? No, we need 16 metallum, so we need two of that, because we want two of these ingots. So we've got two of them, two of them, so that's bubbling. You can throw them in there. Not on the floor, you fool. Throw them into there. Grab our wand. Right click that with the wand. Got us two family ingots. Hooray! Let's uh, stick that steel helmet back in there. I'll be using that at some point. This is going to go in my blocks chest. My wand and my book can go in there along with that bucket. I want two sticks. And iron can go in there. Thalmium ingot. Got thalmium pick, excellent. And now, if we get lucky, we'll get repair on it. From our enchanting table, which is what all this was about, because I get level 30. And we haven't got a repair at all, so all that we've got efficiency for, which is a bit shit, if I'm being honest. But it was worth a try. Right, the episode's run long. And I'm going to carry on off camera, clearing this place out with my new efficiency 4 pick that's going to wear down pretty quick. Uh, get some more materials to make another farming max and I want to keep going until um, I keep making farming maxes until I've got a decent one yeah that's a bit of an anti-climax wasn't it getting efficiency for after all that well as always thank you very much for watching I hope it was enjoyable and uh, I hope we learnt something maybe someone just fell down there it looks like a spider falling from the darkness you can see the little red glints on the corners of blocks so you can see there's actually a platform up there um yeah as always thank you very much for watching i hope it's a little bit educational and i hope it's fun and entertaining and we'll join me next time any likes or comments very much appreciated Ooh, look at this hello slam there's a bit of a uh, slam balls always useful yeah any likes comments always appreciated thank you very much cheers bye